our pleasure to uh, welcome you in this uh, seminar series for the Center of Excellence for Energy. The Center of Excellence for Energy is funded by USAID and is implemented by Arizona State University in cooperation with Ain Shams University, Mansoura University, and Aswan University. Uh, we are very pleased to have uh, our speaker today, Dr. Ahmed Hamid, uh, Mechanical uh, Power Engineering Department, Faculty of Engineering, Mansoura University. And he is going to talk about solar powered air conditioning for a sustainable future, challenges, challenges and opportunities in Egypt. And uh, I'm really eager to uh, know more about this uh, solar powered air conditioning. So please, Dr. Ahmed, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Tamir. Uh, welcome, everyone, uh, to my presentation titled Solar Powered Air Conditioning for a Sustainable Future Challenges and Opportunities uh, in Egypt. Uh, we'll start by examining the adverse impacts of uh, climate change stemming from human activities. Uh, air conditioning being an energy intensive practice often contributes negatively to the environment, particularly when reliant on uh, fossil fuels. We have now heat waves, uh, hurricanes, uh, drought, and uh, flooding. Uh, this slide uh, presents a graphical abstract of my presentation uh, depicting the, uh, uh, the, the sun, uh, depicting the sun's immense energy and the, the uh, fundamental uh, principles of energy conversion for cooling purposes. These two elements are linked to achieve uh, air conditioning by using appropriate technology. Uh, I to begin, I'd like to draw attention to some of the critical key questions related to solar powered air conditioning in Egypt. Uh, of course, this presentation will be helpful in understanding in general the current state of solar powered air conditioning and may help answer some of the questions I have posed. Uh, these questions address the following areas, energy demand and sustainability. How can solar powered air conditioning contribute to addressing the rising energy demand in Egypt while promoting sustainability? Climate consideration, what are the specific challenges and advantages of implementing solar cooling systems in a hot and arid climate? Technological innovation, what recent advancement in solar cooling technologies have the potential to revolutionize air conditioning in Egypt. Uh, economic viability. What are the economic challenges and opportunities associated with the adoption of solar powered air conditioning in Egypt? Integration with existing infrastructure. How can solar powered air conditioning systems be seamlessly integrated into existing urban infrastructure in Egypt? Public awareness and acceptance. What strategies uh, can be employed to increase public awareness and acceptance of this sustainable cooling solution? Government policies and support. How can the government support the research, development, and the implementation of solar cooling technologies? Uh, collaboration and the knowledge exchange, that's which you, which you are doing now, how can international collaboration and the knowledge exchange contribute to the uh, successful implementation of solar powered air conditioning in Egypt? And finally, social and environmental impact. How can the transition to solar cooling positively impact the local communities and reduce the uh, ecological footprint? The outline of the presentation is uh, introduction air conditioning statistics, uh, climatic conditions of Egypt, current status of solar energy in Egypt, uh, solar potential in Egypt, energy for air conditioning, uh, solar technologies for air conditioning, built examples and experiences, uh, 
uh, promising projects for the case of Egypt, recent research work in the Mansoura University, and finally challenges and uh, conclusion. Uh, in June and July 2022, heat waves struck Europe, uh, North Africa, and the Middle East, and Asia, as temperatures climbed above 40 degrees Celsius in places and broke many long-standing records. And again, in July 2023, the world experienced a series of record-breaking heat waves. Uh, temperature soared above uh, 50 degrees Celsius in parts of uh, North America, Europe, and Asia. Uh, these heat waves increase the mortality rate and the hospitalization, especially in the areas with the typical cold climate where the people are not adapted to the intensive heat. As we can see, the uh, rate of temperature rise is uh, 0.08 per decade in the last 200 years. And of course, the high temperature poses risks to workers' safety and can also lead to decreased uh, productivity. The escalating temperatures are driving an organ need for increased energy consumption uh, uh, in residential cooling system. As you can see from 2020 to 2050, the uh, sharing of uh, space cooling uh, is expected to increase from 20% uh, to 37% uh, in 2050. Uh, here, uh, some statistics of the sales of air conditioners worldwide. Uh, these sales uh, have been grown steadily. The bulk of the units uh, uh, sold are package and split units. As we can see in this table, uh, the uh, worldwide uh, units installed up to 2016 is about 1.6 billion units. Uh, uh, from these units, uh, 374 in the United States and the Middle East, uh, 47 only. Uh, the annual uh, sales in 2016 was about 135 million units. We uh, mentioned these figures to use it for comparison later on with the uh, the state of uh, absorption or uh, solar power cooling systems. Uh, most of the energy used for space cooling is in the form of uh, electrical energy and the share of natural gas uh, used almost entirely for thermally driven chillers or systems in uh, commercial buildings. This was just over 1% in 2000. Uh, uh, in the other hand, the uh, enormous disparities in access to space cooling across the world are reflected in per capita uh, uh, level of energy consumption, which vary from a little as uh, 70 kilowatt hours in India to more than uh, 800 in Japan and uh, Korea, and uh, uh, as high as uh, about uh, 2,000 for uh, the United States. Uh, this, of course, indicates the level of living for uh, each of these countries. Uh, on the other hand, we can notice in this graph that uh, China has seen by far the biggest and the fastest increase in energy use for space cooling since uh, 1990 to uh, 2016. We talk a little bit about the situation in Egypt in terms of population, climate, and the energy sources, especially solar energy. Uh, the uh, population distribution in Egypt is not uniform, of course, as we know. Uh, and uh, we can find the, the, the rate of the population dynasty in uh, some governorates is too high and in others uh, is very low. And uh, we can say that there is an immediate necessity to redistribute the population in Egypt 
uh, since a majority currently resides in the Delta and the Nile uh, Valley. However, developing new areas in the desert for habitation will demand a sustainable energy solutions. In Egypt, the people need more air conditioning than heating. Uh, the changing weather patterns are making it even more necessary to use a lot of energy for, for cooling. Uh, energy is having a problem now because there is not enough fuel for power plants. Uh, to fix this, they need to use more renewable energy sources and solar power is a good choice because there is a lot of sunlight in Egypt. Uh, uh, in general, the uh, for the weather condition in Egypt, Egypt has a hot, arid climate throughout uh, the years. And the most parts of Egypt are occupied by Sahara uh, Desert. Also, the temperature level shows that in, in summer season, the maximum temperature is uh, almost near uh, uh, 40 degrees Celsius, which need, uh, in this case, uh, more cooling in the summer uh, seasons. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the projects and the, uh, the, uh, the plans of using uh, uh, renewable energy, especially solar energy, uh, Egypt is clearly making a concerted effort to expand its use of solar energy. As evidenced by these uh, diagrams, the growth of solar photovoltaic technology is the most significant trend in this regard. Uh, it is expected that in uh, 2035, uh, the share of uh, 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 photovoltaic will be about 22% of the uh, energy uh, capacity of Egypt and uh, a small portion of uh, CCB is also expected. Uh, it is well known that Egypt enjoys a large amount of solar radiation throughout the year. This is because uh, Egypt is located in the subtropical zone, which means that it receives a significant amount of direct uh, sunlight. And the, the average annual solar radiation in Egypt is around 2,500 kilowatt hours per square meter. We have also uh, sunlight hours per year is more than uh, 3,000 hours. Uh, the current status of solar energy application in Egypt uh, uh, or the use of solar energy in general, uh, we can see here the installed projects, uh, which is about 1.8 uh, gigawatt distributed in different locations, Zafarana, Bimban, Komombo, uh, Kraimat, uh, and, and, and others. Also have uh, a project under uh, construction of about seven hundred uh, and uh, uh, twenty megawatts are under uh, development. This, of course, uh, the data according to the area uh, twenty twenty two. Uh, this table lists some solar energy projects already installed and working in Egypt. Uh, this I, I can see this this project are uh, the three major projects now in Egypt. Bimban Solar Park and Siwa Solar uh, Plant and Integrated Solar Compound Cycle in uh, Krimat. Uh, we can notice here that uh, the, uh, the problem of funding. Most projects rely on external funding. All these projects are funded from external sources, which uh, uh, demonstrate the biggest challenge in expansion uh, uh, in Egypt on these uh, projects. Uh, there are other examples of uh, grid connected uh, small scale system uh, in Egypt, as shown here. Uh, now we are going to the air conditioning issue. Uh, I think uh, all the audience know that the, the types of air conditioning uh, uh, yeah. In general, air conditioning systems are classified based on type or application. Uh, without going on details, uh, it is known that choosing the type is linked to many factors known to engineers working in the field of refrigeration and air, air conditioning. 
And this classification should be taken into consideration in the case of using the solar energy. Uh, the, uh, the zones of uh, the zones of uh, Egypt are divided into eight zones according to housing and building national uh, research uh, center. Now we uh, go back to the uh, slides uh, uh, presented before, which was the abstract of this uh, presentation. Uh, we stated that we need a defi to define a specific coupling between uh, solar energy and the, the uh, principles of conversion of energy to cooling. And we need an appropriate technology. Uh, various systems can collect the sunlight and utilize to operate uh, cooling mechanisms. Uh, each collection system has its own unique characteristics and the compatibility with a specific cooling system. Uh, and this diagram illustrates the various solar cooling system. As you can see, we have two main paths. The first one is the conversion, direct conversion of uh, solar radiation into electrical energy to power filter element or vapor conversion to heat cooling. And the second path is uh, a conversion of solar radiation into heat or thermal energy using the solar, th solar thermal uh, collector. And also uh, this path uh, is divided to another uh, uh, passes to power either closed cycles or uh, open cycles. And we will discuss this uh, later in detail. Uh, here we can find the coupling between the uh, solar energy by using the PV panels to power a uh, vapor combination system, which is conventional and known to all of us. And this connection uh, between the PV band and the, the uh, uh, the split units, for example, as you can see, uh, has different configuration. In the first one, in the left side, this is called the ACDC on grid solar air conditioner, in which the uh, current coming from the PV uh, feeds the outdoor units, and then signal uh, goes to the indoor units, which is powered by uh, the uh, electricity from the grid. The lower one is uh, completely uh, off-grid DC, uh, 48 PV battery. Uh, the, in this case, all the energy uh, uh, collected from the PV either supplied to the system or stored in the battery to use uh, it in the case of uh, there is no solar energy. Uh, a common connection here, uh, uh, if we uh, use a net metering and uh, convert the energy coming from the BV panel to uh, 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 220 voltage using the inverter, and uh, then uh, uh, supported by the uh, electrical energy from uh, the grid. Uh, now we uh, go to the solar technologies for oil conditioning using uh, thermal collectors. Uh, we have different uh, uh, cooling system which can be powered by heat, but each system uh, has each specific uh, level of temperature. We uh, will touch some examples here in the presentation. Uh, for example, the double or triple effect lithium bromide absorption chiller uh, powered by uh, heat source at temperature levels uh, in this range, 130 to 250. Uh, the most suitable uh, solar collector for this case is the parabolic trough or the linear uh, Fresnel uh, collector. Uh, the second example is the uh, double effect uh, uh, lithium bromide absorption chiller and single effect in the same uh, time for uh, using ammonia or uh, water lithium bromide. In this case, the temperature level required is between uh, 100 and 150 degrees Celsius. Uh, this system can be powered by using uh, either compound parabolic concentrator or uh, evacuated tube uh, collector. The conventional flat blade collector uh, can 
collect energy and uh, give temperatures uh, lower than the other two types from 70 to 120. And this can, can be used to power single effect lithium bromide absorption chiller or single effect uh, ammonia absorption chiller at this level of temperature. And the last one is a solar air heater, which uh, gives a lower temperatures and can be, be used to power a discount evaporative uh, cooling system, which, you need, which is powered by a uh, low level of temperature in general. Uh, this is a general description of the uh, thermally driven air conditioning system. Uh, heat is collected by either any uh, type of the solar thermal collector. And uh, this heat is used to power a cooling system to generate or to get chilled water to be supplied to the building required uh, to be air conditioned. Uh, we will uh, present some examples of these systems. And uh, as you can see, solar thermal energy is typically used for driving this system. Uh, uh, this uh, system is called a closed absorption system. Uh, as a result of uh, the intermittent nature of solar energy, this system must be equipped with uh, storage methods, with, uh, whether for heating or uh, for storage, the, this to compensate for the intermittency of uh, the solar radiation. Uh, I, I think you, there is no need to explain in detail the operation of the absorption system uh, in this uh, presentation. Uh, another uh, version is the, uh, is the uh, closed absorption cooling system that may use uh, silica gel as adsorbent and water as refrigerant. And of course, the temperature uh, of the operator in this case is limited to uh, from five to seven degrees Celsius. This because, of course, water is a, a working fluid. Uh, the typical performance of the absorption chiller is dependent on the number of effects and the level of uh, temperature uh, used to power the uh, system. As we can see, the single effect has a lower uh, COB, and the, then the double effect has higher values, and the triple has the highest value of uh, COB. In this case, the uh, coefficient of performance is defined as the refrigeration capacity and the uh, generating capacity. Uh, of course, the two uh, elements in this uh, definition are uh, heat, either heat uh, uh, of cooling or heat added for uh, regeneration. And this is the definition of the uh, reversible uh, COB. Uh, for comparison with the vapor compression system, uh, it may be uh, noted that the, the COB level here is lower than uh, uh, the vapor compression system, but, but in, in other case, we uh, power the, the vapor compression system by using electrical energy. Uh, in the table below, we can see the level of temperature and the corresponding uh, operating values of the coefficient of performance of the two uh, presented uh, systems. Uh, the solar technologies for air conditioning, we have also uh, what is called the solar discant, uh, solar discant dehumidification, which is a promising technology for dehumidification and the air conditioning. Uh, particularly in hot and humid uh, climates. Uh, it utilizes a solid desiccant uh, material to absorb mixture from the air with regeneration of the desiccant driven by solar thermal energy. Uh, uh, the cycle uh, used for this operation is presented in the figure below. And uh, this uh, chart demonstrates the main processes in, uh, in such systems, which starts from uh, absorption of mixture from the air to the lower level, and then uh, sensible cooling uh, to decrease the temperature of the absorbent. Uh, the final process is the adiabatic uh, saturation process, which decreases the temperature of the air to be supplied to uh, the required air conditioning space. Uh, the liquid desiccant system is another version of solar-powered uh, dehum dehumidification uh, system. In this case, 
we uh, use a liquid desiccant, for example, lithium uh, bromide, lithium chloride, calcium chloride, and the others uh, for uh, uh, the purpose of absorption of humidity from the humid air. And then uh, may, we may use also vapor compression in hybridization with the, uh, uh, the uh, discant absorption system. Uh, in this part of the presentation, I can say that there is a more mature market for separate components of a solar coring system, including the solar thermal collector, a PV module uh, for the exploitation of solar energy to produce cooling power. Uh, and now to compare the traditional air conditioning system and solar power system in terms of use and implementation, uh, we find that the bulk units, as stated before, installed uh, uh, up to 2016 uh, in residential application is about 1.6 billion units worldwide. In the same time, we can find that in 2015, the total uh, number of uh, uh, solar cooling system installed in Europe and worldwide is presented here in the figure. And we can find this figure is only 1,350 units. In comparison with 1.6 billion units, there is a big difference between uh, the, uh, the case of implementation and the deployment of the two types. Uh, also, the, uh, uh, this uh, 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 figure shows the uh, predominant uh, type of the uh, heat-driven system used in all these numbers, which is absorption chiller. It is more than 50%, uh, uh, which is used uh, in uh, absorption in, in Europe and worldwide uh, as a a cooling technology for absorption as, uh, for solar powered absorption system. Uh, we can see also that uh, the decrease in cost of the absorption cooling system uh, with time uh, and capacity. As the capacity increases, the uh, cost per kilowatt cooling decrease, and with time, due to the improvement in the technology and the uh, decreasing the prices, uh, the also uh, results in decrease in the price. This, of course, uh, uh, the data up to 2012. And just one minute break, and we will go back to complete the presentation. Uh, again, here are some examples that uh, were tested in some European countries, uh, France, Germany, and Austria. Uh, these examples uh, started operation in nearly 2008 or uh, 10. Uh, the first one is uh, an absorption chiller in a laboratory building uh, in uh, France. Uh, this uh, chiller was about 2.1 ton of refrigeration. Uh, the second one, uh, 2.8 absorption chiller in uh, Germany. And this is a photo of this unit. The third was uh, installed in Austria uh, of a five ton uh, refrigeration. 
And the last one was also in Austria of 1.2 uh, ton. Uh, in general, this uh, system were tested and uh, reported with details uh, covering the performance and the, the acceptance of the user, their, their opinion uh, uh, with operation with this system and so on. Uh, from the point of view of the performance of this system, uh, we can uh, find that the higher the required chilled water temperature, the higher are the refrigeration capacity and the COB uh, of the absorption refrigeration machine. Uh, this uh, is coincide with the performance also of the uh, vapor uh, compression uh, system. Uh, also, we have uh, some data about the installed and administration uh, solar power system in MENA countries. Uh, this data were reported on uh, 2022, and I found one of them uh, installed at uh, Aswan, uh, at Asyut University. It was an absorption chiller installed at 2012 uh, through a German Egyptian demonstration project uh, on solar cooling purpose. Uh, this chiller was about uh, 7.5 kilowatt, and uh, uh, according to my knowledge, it was uh, uh, silica gel water. Uh, which can be used for air uh, conditioning. Uh, it is clear from this table that most of the units were pilot and uh, demonstration uh, systems. Now, uh, I think some uh, uh, questions uh, uh, may be appeared. How, how, what is the difference between photovoltaic for air conditioning and uh, the uh, solar uh, based unit or for uh, thermally powered uh, refrigeration systems. Uh, we can focus here in uh, four points. From the point of view of applicability for air conditioning, uh, I think uh, the uh, photovoltaic is more suitable for uh, uh, decentralized air conditioning applications. On the other side, for the heat powered systems, uh, this system uh, will be suited for a uh, centralized air conditioning system. Uh, from uh, the aspect of cost and the air, uh, of, for air conditioning, uh, the PV is still uh, lower uh, in, uh, in terms of initial cost for a smaller application. But the heat powered system uh, is still higher uh, in terms of cost for larger scale application. Uh, uh, for the system complexity for air conditioning, simple design for PV, because it, uh, uh, it is coupled with a, a mature technology, uh, which is a vapor compression system, and uh, fewer components, and easy to integrate with the existing uh, HVAC systems. Uh, the thermally powered are more complex system, with mirrors, uh, receivers, and thermal system, which requires a specialized uh, component for air condition. Mm -hmm. uh, the last aspect here, ad adaptability in uh, climate condition, uh, the PV uh, performs well in various climatic conditions for air conditioning. Whereas the, the heat powered system, it is, uh, it is based on conversion of solar energy to heat, are sensitive to local weather uh, conditions. Uh, despite the need for air conditioning, we don't need uh, to distort the general appearance of the buildings, especially if they are heritage building. Therefore, it is necessary to think about alternatives for systems that requires the installation of external units. Uh, the alternative may be either central system or district cooling. However, the central system consume a large area of the building, which uh, may reach a number of floors in some cases. Therefore, linking the solar energy to the district cooling system may be the, idea, the ideal alternative in this case. Uh, 
by definition, the district cooling is a, a centralized system that produce chilled water at a central plant, which is then distributed through a network of underground pipes to multiple building within a designated areas. Uh, this system allows for efficient cooling of multiple facilities without the need uh, for individual air conditioning units in each building. And the, the proposal here is to power the absorption chiller uh, in a central uh, unit using CSCB and then supply the building with uh, this uh, cooling uh, or with the cooling water uh, without any distortion of the building in this case. Uh, for the Egyptian case, we have promising projects for the case of Egypt. Uh, we have now uh, some coastal cities like New Al Al Amin city, which is located on the north coast, and the New Mansoura city also. Uh, these cities uh, 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 will need uh, a high uh, demand of uh, energy to power either the uh, water desalination system, as we know, this, uh, these cities will not supply by water from the Nile. All the cities will, de will depend on the uh, desalinated water. And also the, uh, the air conditioning load uh, will uh, strain on uh, the grid. So uh, we can propose for these cities to use a central uh, system or district cooling system uh, barred by uh, CCB. Uh, to compare the district cooling and the conventional, uh, conventional uh, cooling system uh, from some uh, aspects, uh, we can say that the, the efficiency uh, of the district cooling is uh, uh, higher than that uh, uh, from the conventional cooling system, and the maintenance requirements is lower. Uh, in terms of cost and uh, centralized uh, uh, upkeep. Uh, also, easily expanded to uh, accommodate additional buildings and can use sustainable energy sources for central plants, uh, potential for more efficient use uh, of energy and fewer uh, emissions. Uh, I can now summarize some challenges which may face the uh, the installation of uh, solar cooling system in case of Egypt. The first one is the high initial cost. The significant upfront investment required for solar air conditioning example. We have uh, mentioned before that the three main uh, solar power parks in Egypt are uh, funded um, from outside sources. Uh, technological infrastructure, need for advanced solar technologies, skilled professionals, and a reliable supply chain. Uh, public awareness, we have lack of understanding about the benefits and the functioning of solar air condition. Uh, intermittent solar power, dependence on sunlight, necessitate effective energy storage solution for hybrid uh, systems. Uh, uh, climate variability, harsh environment conditions may require regular maintenance to uh, for optimal performance. And financial support, uh, limited access to affordable financing sub, uh, options for installation. Uh, now we uh, uh, are going to uh, speak a little bit about the research in the area of uh, solar cooling. Uh, the number of uh, publication according to SCOBAS database uh, accessed uh, in January uh, 2022 is presented here. As we can see, there is, uh, as shown in the graph, uh, the number of publication related to solar board air conditioning has been steadily increased, indicating growing interest in this field. Uh, I will be presenting some of the research projects I have been involved with uh, in one uh, of the following uh, slides, uh, including a uh, scientific dissertation, uh, collaborative research efforts, and we will focus uh, on the main titles of the research, omitting detailed discussion of the results and methodology, which can be found uh, 
uh, in uh, the original uh, publications. Weekly, I will present the, this uh, research work, which we are carried in uh, our department at Mansoura University. This list is the one, uh, it was a PhD dissertation. Uh, 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 here we presented a novel, multi-tray pack the bed, uh, solid desiccant, uh, dehumidifier. It was developed and uh, tested. Uh, they proposed the configuration in general aimed to achieve high mixture removal from the system and lower pressure drop. Uh, we have tested the desorption characteristics of this cantibid for solar dehumidification uh, air conditioning system. Uh, and again, we uh, tested the uh, absorption, absorption process You're using a solid desiccant in an inclined fluidized bed. And this uh, was a theoretical or uh, analytical study for the effect of uh, fin design parameters on the performance of two bid uh, adsorption chiller. Uh, we also uh, uh, tested the multi state absorption energy storage, which is required in operation mainly in heat powered refrigeration system. And uh, we have uh, also studied the uh, so-called open absorption cooling system. We coupled the uh, open uh, solar water heater to the closed uh, absorption cycle. And also in this figure, we tested the transient absorption, absorption characteristic uh, of uh, silica gel particles in fluidized bed. Uh, the dehumidification uh, using rotating wheel uh, are also tested, uh, and uh, we have also investigated the radial flow and humidification bit, which is shown in this figure. The flow uh, uh, in, in, in radial case flow, the pressure drop uh, uh, decreases uh, in many times. We, we uh, will show the, the, the vertical bit and the radial uh, backed bit. There is a big difference in terms of pressure between the two uh, uh, configurations. Here we coupled the uh, uh, solar water heater to the uh, regenerator uh, for the purpose of uh, regeneration of liquid desiccant using low temperature lever from a solar uh, collector. And this was one of the oldest work we have carried out at Mansoura University. Really, it was my master, it was in 1986 to 1988. This was an absorption cooling system powered by a flat plate collector and uses ammonia water, uh, uh, ammonia as a refrigerant and water as a refrigerant. And I uh, remember that we have reached uh, uh, in this system uh, minus 60 degrees Celsius in, during the test of this uh, system at that time. Uh, Currently, we are carrying uh, research on the uh, regeneration of uh, liquid desiccant using uh, solar evacuated uh, tube, as shown in figure. This experimental study, it is aimed to conduct experiments to investigate uh, effect of different parameters on the regeneration uh, performance, such as uh, air temperature at inlet and the flow rate, uh, solution uh, concentration, uh, concentration and solar radiation as well. Uh, finally, uh, the conclusion of this presentation can be stated in this point. Uh, technological advances on improving will enhance efficiency and affordability of solar cooling system. Uh, government support, uh, continued uh, policies, incentives, and uh, subsidies will drive widespread adoption. Uh, public awareness education campaigns will promote the long-term benefits of solar cooling. Collaboration, uh, partnership between government, private sector, and international uh, entities will facilitate uh, uh, implementation. Uh, economic viability, decreasing the cost of solar technologies will make system more accessible uh, to a broader uh, audience. Uh, climate resilience, future technologies will uh, prioritize solution resilient, uh, resilient to Egypt environment challenges. 
uh, integration, seamless integration with existing infra infrastructure is crucial for a smooth uh, transition. Uh, global trends, ongoing global focus on sustainability will further boost the adoption of solar cooling uh, solution Egypt. Thank you all for your attention and uh, 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 your question are welcome. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Ahmad, uh, for this interesting presentation. And now we can open the floor uh, for uh, uh, questions. Uh, dear Dr. Ahmad, uh, in slide 16, you mentioned that there is an installed 30 megawatt uh, BV uh, system in Egypt, but you didn't name the location. Uh, should you tell us about this station? Sorry, again, the question, please. Uh, in slide 16, you yes. mentioned that there is a, a 30 uh, megawatt BV uh, station installed in Egypt, but you didn't mention the location. Okay, I will go back to the slide. And, okay, uh, uh, 16. Uh, check the coordinates. Okay. Yeah. The one in the, uh, uh, in the right side, the right side, standalone BV system, 30 megawatt. Where is this station? Uh -huh. Standalone BV system uh, may be distributed, not uh, in a special uh, case, or uh, the, uh, this may be a uh, standalone, not um, a specific location. Yeah, standalone, it might be, uh, since you, you, you mentioned that it's a 30 megawatt, it's it's not distributed, it's one stage, it's one thing. Maybe I, 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 we can check this data from the, okay. Uh, okay, thank the you. report of Nadia, but I don't know. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do we have any other? Yeah, we have uh, uh, Dr. Dia uh, who has raised his hand. Please, Dr. Dia. Dean Ahmed. There was a raised hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. First, I want to thank you, Dr. Ahmed, uh, for this uh, useful discussion and lecture. And uh, I want to ask uh, you uh, one question uh, about uh, in the comparison between the BV or photovoltaic for uh, solar air conditioning and solar uh, thermally based conditioning, or cooling. Okay. Okay. okay we'll yeah. go to yeah. this uh, comparison and. Uh, Okay. Conversion. Okay. Uh, you showed that uh, the first type uh, is uh, is lower in uh, in cost in or initial cost. What about the running cost for the two types? Oh, of the BV, you mean? Eh? Okay. Uh, I mean uh, the what about the running cost for the two types? Which is uh, the best? The two type. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. I will go to the slides to, uh, to compare and then discuss together. I think it, in the slide uh, 32, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yes, this one. Okay, this one. you're asking about the, the cost of uh, both type, yes? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. In the slide, you showed uh, that the, the initial cost. Yes, what about, what about what about that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, what about the, the running cost? The running cost, uh, uh, if we take into consideration the cost of electricity, and the the rising cost of electricity is considered or taken into consideration, maybe the rising the uh, the operating cost uh, will be concentrated for the heat power system in the maintenance all. But uh, the running cost of the uh, PV, uh, if included the electricity, it may be better in this case. Sorry, sorry, um, I, I can't hear the last part in the answer. I, I, I have some, uh, some uh, voices uh, 
I, I hear some voices from about the discussion, I don't know. We can check the mics, please. Dalia can okay. check the mics because I have said something. Uh, okay. Yes. I, <laughs> and I've uh, muted everyone, but, but uh, it, it seems like I missed someone. Okay. okay. Uh, I, I, you can hear me now? I can hear you. Uh, uh, I can hear you. But I, okay, okay. I will mute everyone. I will mute everyone until somebody raises their hand. No problem. Okay, okay. I I will go back to the the question uh, about the cost of uh, the two uh, systems, the PV system and the uh, heat operated system. The uh, cost of electric of electricity if if the system uh, connected to the grid and the the, uh, the 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 part of sharing of the grid electricity uh, increases uh, in this case we take into consideration the electrical energy cost as an as a running cost. Uh, for the thermal system, uh, there is no cost of energy added, but the main cost is in the maintenance. And in this case, uh, we can say it depends of if the, uh, the BV uh, powered uh, vapor compression system is mainly dependent on the solar energy and the bulk of energy added to the system is coming from the BV, this minimizes the uh, electricity cost. And the, in this case, the uh, uh, we can deal with case by case. We cannot take a, a, a one decision for all the case. But in general, I think the maintenance cost of the heat operated refrigeration system is generally higher than that for the BV. And the, the initial uh, cost, uh, which I mean the installation cost for the thermal system is uh, usually uh, higher than that of the uh, BV coupled with the uh, vapor combination system. I hope that I, 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 I can give some, mm, some sort of answering uh, for the, your questions. Dr. Nabil Sabri has raised his hand. Dr. Nabil, you are muted. Uh, Dalia muted all uh, the partners. So, uh, no, 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 I, no, I unmuted everybody else again. Okay, so you can hear me. Ah, I uh, can hear you. Yes, yes, I, I give. I yes, give. yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Professor Hamid, for this very, very, very interesting lecture and uh, very informing about different aspects. Uh, it's not really a question, but it's, uh, let's say, uh, more a hope than a question. Uh, you have mentioned that district cooling is the best, the best answer for uh, for this type of cooling, and you have uh, uh, yes, yes, this is this ugly picture, and uh, you have mentioned that we have an opportunity for two cities uh, that are recently built, uh, New Alamein and New Mansura cities. Uh, is it a hope? To install district cooling, or is it in the plans? And and the same question goes not only for this for these cities; it goes for uh, nationwide. What are the are there any plans to install this kind of uh, of cooling district cooling? Uh, you know about. Yes, yes. Thank you, Dr. Nabir, for your question, and it is an interesting question. And the uh, uh, actually. Uh, uh, I, I, I will depend on my memory now <laughs> uh, because I, I remember that in the administrative capital, there is already a, 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 a planned project to build a district cooling system uh, uh, with coupled with uh, or uh, powered by an absorption chiller and the vapor combustion system uh, together in the uh, administrative capital. And uh, there are other uh, projects in Egypt. I, I, I remember I have the data about four projects, but uh, uh, for these cities, uh, it, uh, according to my knowledge, there is no plans. Uh, it was only uh, uh, no, it, it is only an hope for, uh, from my point of view. Yes, thank you. Uh, Dr. Hussam Ali. Okay. 
thanks a lot, Dr. Ahmed, for your informative uh, presentation. Actually, I have uh, two questions. First one related to, uh, we can recall 34, the slide 34 again. Okay. Just two slides. The comparison, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, I have a question regarding if we want to maximize the benefit from both configuration. Is it is it possible to build one uh, installment for both of them, photovoltaic, uh, solar powered air conditioning, and solar thermary based cooling for uh, to maximize this one for the uh, summer for summer uh, cooling and one of for the heating in the winter? Is it possible or not? This is the first question, okay? Yes. The okay. second question, should I should I ask the second question directly? No, I will uh, ask the first one and then we go to the second one. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the question. Uh, you have uh, you mean the hybridization of uh, the uh, the cooling system? Uh, yeah. I agree with you to use the two system or to collect the benefits of the two system, but uh, this was just a comparison to uh, to to show the uh, benefits and. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, the um, the benefits of each of them to try to collect the, all the benefits in both. But in in general, I agree with you. Uh, we can build a, a hybrid system uh, using BV and uh, CSB because each of them uh, is uh, has its uh, um, uh, appropriate operating conditions. For example, uh, when we speak about the uh, centralized system like district cooling, I think uh, uh, powering this system with uh, absorption chiller and using CCB is, is the most suitable because we uh, will need a centralized maintenance. I mean centralized maintenance in this case. Uh, the use of uh, PV for cooling is already exists in Egypt. Because I, I said before that if we uh, connect, for example, bim uh, solar park to the grid, we already use PV uh, to uh, power the cooling system uh, at our homes. Um, uh, no, in general, I agree to uh, in, in terms of hybridization, that's okay. Yes, I understand. Thanks a lot. The second question. Regarding regarding the challenge of we already have some old building that have uh, its own uh, uh, central unit or like uh, each each apartment has its own uh, air conditioning system. So is it possible if we want to uh, add the solar BV uh, to uh, attach the solar BV with the already installed uh, air conditioning system? Is it possible to do this for the old building or we, con we should consider this for the new building only. Uh, for the new building, I think uh, the government should uh, make some incentive to encourage uh, uh, investor to do that. But for the old building, that's depend on the available area in the uh, in the roof of the building because uh, the old building may be uh, located in some locations which uh, may have problems in collection uh, in collecting solar energy uh, because of the height of the building and surround and so on. But uh, uh, we can use if the uh, the area and also the issue of architectural uh, uh, of the building, if, if it helps us to install BV and connect them to the uh, the already installed Weber compression system, uh, it will be okay. But in some cases, it may, it may be difficult to do that because the area and the, the uh, direction of the walls and the, the shading of the uh, neighbor building and so on. Yes, yes, thanks a lot for your time. Thanks a lot for your presentation. Thank you. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat or the Q&A. So uh, I guess uh, that's it for today. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Ahmed, for this uh, interesting uh, presentation. And thanks for the audience for their attendance and um, interesting discussion and questions.